Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Youth Matters, a show looking at local, global and national issues affecting the youth of today. Now in today's show we are discussing the recent rise in hate crimes. According to the Home Office, in 2016, 2016, uh, the percentage of increase was 19%. Now what's more worrying is with the recent incidents that have taken place, you know, how high that could be in 2017 and what impact that will have on individuals and communities living in Britain. Uh, as always, we want to know about your views. What do you think okay, has caused such an uprise uh, in such uh, horrific crimes? And, you know, are you someone who's been affected? Do you have family members who might have been affected? If that's the case, then please get in touch. You've got the email on the screen, as do you have the number as well. So please get in touch and tell us what are your views on this. I'm delighted to um, welcome three guests onto the show to provide different perspectives on this particular topic of discussion. First of all, uh, Abdul Rahim, who is a youth service manager uh, working for, in the community. Abdul Salam, who is a writer. Uh, amongst many other things, and uh, Majida Begum, who's a student representing the view of the youth today. So thank you for coming on to the show. Before we go any further, we will show a video uh, just to highlight some of the concerns and recent uh, incidents that have taken place in our community, and we'll come back and go straight into the discussion after the video. British Muslims face more discrimination in the workplace than any minority group. A report has revealed that Muslim men are almost 80% less likely to have a job compared to white male British Christians of the same age and qualifications. This follows a rise in religious hate crimes. Artie's Harry Fear has more. Mina's suffered four anti-Muslim hate crimes since her family moved house to North Norwich. The worst of which took place just two minutes walk from her home. Me and my friend Yasmin were walking back from the city um, and we noticed a woman in the corner and she was sort of mumbling things to us that we couldn't quite understand. And then that's when she shouted in my face, you, and she pulled my veil down and she pushed me to the floor. But she was also saying things like, you know, you terrorists, we don't trust you. The 19-year-old's adamant her assailant was motivated by religious hatred, Islamophobia, because of the face veil she chooses to wear. Across the road, on, uh, there were people sitting on the benches, actually, and there was quite a few, you know, it was a, it was a bright day, you know, people are outside enjoying their pints or whatever, and they're just, you know, sitting there looking on, and then it's clear that in, you know, broad daylight, like, there was two young girls getting attacked. Islamic terrorism, Islamist radicalisation, Muslim extremist. Many Muslims now fear the media climate in which these terms are ever common makes them all the more vulnerable. If there is a national incident or an international incident, you are going to unfortunately have impacts here in the UK at a street level affecting people's lives and online. According to one monitor, there's been a long-term increase in Islamophobic hate crime of around 6% over the past two years and last summer saw an almost threefold increase in incidents following the slaying of British soldier Lee Rigby. And now, with the brutal self-styled Islamic State increasingly in the news, the terrorist group's recent barbarity is now being pinned on innocent Muslims here, reflected in anti-Muslim hate faced by Brits online. The word beheading, for example, will be thrown at Muslims and saying like, oh, you know, we should behead you. So we've had cases where actually the kind of language and the narratives that the media has in terms of reporting about ISIS um, have actually come into to actual hate crimes. The so that was a short video just kind of summing up some of the challenges that our individuals and communities are facing in Britain uh, in this day and age. But Abdul Rahim, I'll start with you. Um, what's, what's caused such a surge in hate crimes in your opinion? Uh, Bismillah, alhamdulillah. Um, from my point of view, these things need to be understood um, in context, historically, sociologically, economically, politically. Um, and essentially what I would argue is that um, Britain, British uh, society is institutionally um, and structurally white supremacist in nature fundamentally and has, has been for, for hundreds of years. Um, and that um, what we're seeing now 
this 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 uh, this manifestation of, of white supremacy um, is essentially a uh, fundamental British value. Okay, um, but the Abdul Salam, um, how do you, you know we 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 hear the term hate crime? Mm -hmm. How how would you define hate crime? So for the benefit of uh, our audience watching at home. Oh God, a hate crime is very simple. I mean, it's uh, to discriminate. Um, uh, carry out uh, criminal activities, activities that are deemed illegal in this country, against another uh, group uh, based on their race, religion, colour. Um, yeah, pretty much, pretty straightforward. Hate crime is mm. pretty much what it says. Hate mm. crime. Mm. So. Thank you. And uh, Majida, um, someone who's, what's the feeling amongst young Muslims uh, living in our communities? Uh, how do they feel? What's their kind of response to what's uh, going on around them? I think there is definitely a feeling of marginalisation in which young British Muslims, they feel sidelined from mainstream British society or as we saw on the video from jobs and careers and I think that marginalisation has even led to the rise in terrorism which is causing Islamophobia. Um, so I think there's definitely a feeling of marginalisation and kind of just feeling like outsiders and that they are not part of British society. Okay, um, but Abdul Rahim, you work with you know young people on a daily basis. Um, these recent hate crimes, whether it be acid attacks, verbal, physical uh, attacks on individuals uh, in communities, how how wh what's the feeling you know uh, with the people that you're working with? How are they responding to that? Um, I don't think I can answer really from a, a sort of professional point of view. Um, you know, I, I manage services these days, so I don't, I don't work with young people directly anymore, but I'm certainly still connected into yeah. the community and I have my own children and, and spend um, time working a, around young people, I guess. Um, I think essentially what we have is a, a kind of escalating level of fear that is um, uh, growing in the community. And, um, you know, when I think about uh, what, what's happening for for my wife and and my children and my mother-in-law that the the kind of concern is that every time I go out of my house something's gonna happen I think we do need to distinguish it between some of the acid attacks that are happening that are criminally uh, are clearly criminal and, and involved in sort of other criminal issues between um, people that are, are offending and, and and doing those sort of things and other things that are very clearly um, motivated by by racism or white supremacy um, and but I think it's important that we don't just focus on on the most extreme attacks as your video kind of quite clearly outlined um, that structurally and systemically um, this impacts black um, and people of colour and Muslims uh, in the workplace across a whole range of, of different um, areas of society. Mm. Brother thank you. Uh, Brother Abdul Salam, uh, what's you know how are you feeling you know as a as a you know, as a Bangladeshi British uh, Muslim living in the UK, how 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 are you feeling at the moment? Because obviously, you know, there's been many crimes, uh, recent uh, crimes that have led to people, you know, reacting in the way that they have, and uh, almost not knowing how to react as well, and always uh, ch double checking to ensure that you know they're not the next victim and so forth. So, how are you feeling as an individual living in Britain today? Personally, it, I, I, um, I mean, I, I'll be honest with you, personally it hasn't affected me that much. Um, but I do get a lot of emails and I do hear of friends. Um, I mean, a close friend recently has decided to stop wearing hijab, for example, uh, because she's been attacked twice. And this, I mean, it's, it's very easy for people mm -hmm. to say, you know, oh, what, I would never take my headscarf off. But unless you've been in that situation, you don't know what's going through somebody's head. And this is a girl who's worn hijab for the last 20 years. Um, somebody tried to throw something into her car, so uh, that's one attack. Somebody else came and physically started pushing her around and started grabbing at her, at her headscarf. So after a lot of consideration, she's decided, and, and, and I'm sure there are many other people like that out there. So yeah, there is, yes, there, absolutely, there is a climate of fear. Uh, for me personally, it, it hasn't affected me in, in any way. I mean, I'm, I'm just that kind of person who I won't, I won't tolerate this. So. Mm. I've lived here way too long and I pay too many taxes to tolerate <laughs> this stuff, you know. Sure. But I know people who definitely, I would say that there, a lot of people are mm. looking over their shoulders, they're cautious. Well, they're, my wife, um, she looks, you know, she, she, she saw some, some, some random man parked outside our house the other day and she, she really felt like he was just, he was just watching. And she, she started, sure. she was on edge coming into the house. Um, and she wouldn't go out again until I turned up at home. Mm. So yes, it, it, it has affected. 
you know. Thank you. Um, as always, you know, this is a show all about the youth and our community. So if you've experienced anything or you know people who might have been affected by this or if you've got an opinion on it, please get in touch. The number's on the screen, as is the email address. So please get in touch and we will read those emails out. Oh, we will take your call live on air and uh, we'll obviously uh, get to find out what you think of this particular uh, topic of discussion. Majida, coming back to you, you know, from what Brother, Brother Al-Samad said, uh, Salam has said, um, it seems to be a very testing time for, uh, you know, especially it seems as though for some of our sisters who wear hijab, uh, like yourself, mashallah, uh, at this moment in time with everything that's going on. What's your take on that? I think definitely, especially what you said about, you know, how people won't understand until it's hit them right in the face. And I think a lot of our sisters, they are worried. And it seems exaggerated, you know, it's, it's a piece of cloth, literally it is. But people have so much fear, you know, just on trains, buses. And as you said, your wife walking just to her own mm -hmm. house, property that she owns, she feels fear. Why should she? And it's disgusting because we live in London and it's such a diverse city and we would never have expected this. And the fact that so many people have come to this city for everything that it promotes and what we're being faced with is absolutely ridiculous. Mm. Um, and I guess, again, with our sisters, I've heard myself, so many people who are hesitant of the clothing they wear or of representing their religion because they're scared. Mm, thank you. Um, well, Abdul Rahim, coming back to you, um, there's, you know, some, uh, there's suggestions from some independent groups uh, like Tell Mama who report that people are more likely to report to them as opposed to the police. So what's, your, what's your view on that? And what, what can we conclude from? Uh, I, I, I honestly don't know. Um, I think, um, considering what I just said about the, the, the way uh, you know, structural and systemic racism works for our society, there's certainly, um, I would have hesitations about things I report to the police. Uh, I think that the, the police force has um, challenges itself. So I might have some reservations about reporting things to the police. People are often afraid to report things to the police anyway. Mm. Um, that being said, um, you know, I, I sometimes query, tell mama's uh, alignments politically, and, sure. I'm, and I'm not sure whether I, I would do that either. So I think, you know, for, for many Muslims, that leaves us sort of stuck between a rock and a hard place and, and who you can genuinely trust. And I think ultimately we, as a community, um, and, and, and as an as a influential and, um, and powerful community, um, we have the resources um, to, to consider solutions for ourselves. Um, and we need to take the challenge seriously um, and put aside the, the appropriate resources, and I don't mean necessarily just financial resources, but the time and energy and, and the institutions that we do have available at our disposal, on masajid and so on and so forth, to actually really consider what are um, the, the genuine grassroots solutions that we can create for ourselves. Mm, thank you. Now, coming back to you, Brother Abdul Salam. Um, so, so if, uh, you know, what Brother Abdul Rahim is saying, you know, we can't, we can't go to the police, uh, because uh, we can go to the police, but it feels as though more people are avoiding uh, going to the police. And, you know, there are many hate crimes that aren't being recorded as a result. Mm -hmm. So, you know, where does that leave us as a, as a community? I think if things are not resolved very quickly, um, this will escalate on both sides of the fence. It's only a matter of time. I mean, it's, it's our women, you know what, it's, I, I'm a man, you're a man, we're all big strong men here and whatnot. Um, it, it seems to be that it's always the women that get attacked first. It's the women that are easy pickings. It's only a matter of time before somebody's sister, the wrong person's sister, the wrong person's mother gets attacked and there will be a backlash from the community. Mm. Um, and you could feel it, you could sense it's kind of brooding and, and then the sensible brothers are all like, no, 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 let's keep our head, head on our shoulders, but for how long? Mm. You know? And then when we do, when there is a backlash, again, mainstream media, mainstream society will point a finger at us and blame us for our behavior. Mm. Um, and it wasn't really us that started the fire in the first place. Sure, and uh, you know, um, recently there's been many um, <coughs> acid attacks that have been reported. Uh, why has this, you know, uh, why has this become so kind of at the forefront of, of the news and, and incidents that have taken place? Okay, <coughs> excuse me. Regarding the acid attacks, I, I think it's really important to clarify there are two types of attacks here. One is based on hate crime, 
there are people who are um, attacking Muslims with many other things besides yeah. acid, but acid is, 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 is one of these options. There is another I guess group. the story that comes to mind is yeah. that uh, male and female uh, Muslims who were, who were attacked yeah. and, you know, they were... De uh, yeah, that, that, that is... Yeah. So I guess, I guess that's the uh, that example that comes to mind. Blatantly and without a doubt, uh, a hate crime carried out by a coward, a, 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 a sick, twisted coward who used acid because it is a very easy form of, uh, to, uh, of attack. There's no, you don't have to wait around for the consequences. You don't have to, you know, it's not like carrying a knife or sh actually shooting someone. You throw acid and you go. Mm. And, that, and, and, then, and then you leave the devastation to be done. I'm going to come back to you sure. because we've got yeah. a caller on the line. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, caller. Uh, my name is Assalamu Assalamualaikum, brother. Thank you for calling. Uh, how would you like to contribute to the discussion? Uh, I'd like to say that, of course, it's, it is a problem, but uh, we need to be very careful in the way we discuss these matters uh, because obviously, you know, we have to rely on the uh, rule of law to deal with these matters. And of course, police are our first uh, line of contact in this area. Police should be taking responsibility. And we should obviously do everything in our power to ensure that our local politicians, national politicians, work to ensure that the police do their job. Um, serving the community. If we lose sort of uh, respect for the police, and I think, as you know, uh, in Britain, uh, police were not respected uh, across the country, by the way, whether in Glasgow, Edinburgh, uh, or in Newcastle, the bulk of the community in this country did not have trust in police. Uh, up to the, I would say, late 90s, and then when uh, certain horrible things happened and, and there was an attempt to clean up the behavior of police, things began to improve. I think things have improved quite a bit. So I think we should be cautious uh, about the way we approach this. But we should, what we should not give up on is that police are, as I say, the first line of contact to ensure there is, that there is justice and uh, equity in the way uh, our society operates. That's one thing, very, very important. Second thing I want to say is that we can learn a lot from the Jewish community. The Jewish community actually have done a sterling work in ensuring that their community is protected from racial hostilities. And they have experience of over 100 years, whereas Muslims, uh, are Bengali Muslims or Muslims from Middle East and so forth, we, we are experienced perhaps 60 years old, despite the fact that Bengalis have been in Britain for 500 years. People don't realize this. And that for 260 years, uh, Bengalis have been in Britain. We created a curry culture 200 years ago. You know, We also set up first mosques in coastal areas. It was Bengalis who did that 250 years ago. But what I'm saying is that Yes, hostility has increased, but we can learn from other communities. The experience of Jewish community is very, very important. We should certainly ask them how they have been able to tackle these issues, okay. what type of uh, approaches to be taken. And also the third point is that how we educate our own children. You are parents, all of you, I think. It's very, very important that our parents take a very cautious approach in the way, um, like Thank the parents you. do, for example, when, when a stranger comes in, we tell our children that we should be very cautious in the way we approach strangers or spro strangers approach us. Okay, thank you, brother, uh, for those comments. Um, Brother Abdurrahim, uh, what's, your, what's your take on what the caller was saying about how we as a community uh, need to be a bit more active, like uh, he, mm -hmm. he gave the example of the Jewish community? I, I always find it interesting that when um, whatever the kind of issue is, if we articulate strong positions, if we take quite critical points of view, uh, the immediate response from uh, someone else in the community will always be to err on the side of caution and to try to mitigate that strong position, which I find, I find uh, disappointing but expected, to be honest with you. Um, absolutely, that we should be able to rely on the police. No one's saying that we shouldn't. Mm. We absolutely should be able to rely on the police. I guess what we were saying was, yeah. why is yeah. people's confidence well, as, not as, in the... As the brother said, we, mm. we pay our taxes, 
um, and they should be there to provide us with that service. But um, we, we can't be naive about the challenges that affect the police service as well as other institutions in this country and how that impacts different parts of the community. Um, as far as looking to the Jewish community, I think there's always opportunities to learn from other communities, absolutely. But I think there's some very important distinctions to make. A, um, most of the Jewish community in, in this country are white, um, and therefore they are afforded certain privileges. I am myself white, um, and so I have a certain perspective into that. Um, and I think it's also interesting to think about um, the fact that um, you know, the, the relationships that manifest in this country now okay. are contextualised by history of colonialism of Britain in places like Bangladesh. Okay, thank you for that. Um, that's the end of the first segment. Do stay with us. After the break, we will be listening. We will have a caller on the line who was a victim uh, of uh, uh, such a hate crime uh, recently, and she will be sharing her experiences with us. So please do uh, stay watching. Thank you. <laughs> 